And as forensic scientists and ballistic experts have, have helped, they've completely de delegitimized beyond reasonable doubt that this could even be true. Exactly. The whole hoax could be true. Exactly. So let me ask you this. If it's so absurd, let's even begin with 15 bullets, there being no blood, the victims disappearing right afterwards with no blood scene or murder scene. Let me ask this. You would think that in a fair society, and we are told, for instance, that the Muslim world stands for peace and, and that it, there's a objectivity and, you know, uh, that they also want uh, to reach their hand out in accommodation. Because of the absurdity of this hoax, let me ask you this. What Muslim clerics have come forward to support you? Mm, Muslim clerics to come and support me? Yes. I mean, you would think that the religious leaders of a community that care about peace, justice, and truth, that out of a thousand, there may be one. I mean, we have leftist rabbis, right-wing rabbis, right? Yeah, we have rabbis supporting... I want to know who in the Muslim world, for instance, has come out in support and said, this is not a tactic we need to be using. Well, I think never. We've never had... To. I mean, I had Muslim supporters, but personal Muslim support. I don't, you know, I, I don't uh, characterize people because they're Muslims or Jews, because... Our worst opponents in this case were some no, extreme left is Jews. No, I understand, but, I, but, but this involves the Palestinians. Palestinians. Yeah. So I, my, my, my question is, you have Jews on the side of Palestinians. You have you know, Jewish rabbis on the side of Muslims and Palestinians. What I'm saying is, even tell me this, how about Palestinians themselves that said this is a hoax and came to... to so what, if they were really caring for the Palestinians, they would care for what I'm telling you here. Because who are the worst victims? If you look at the bottom line, who, who were and who are the worst victims of this picture? The Arabs. Because if you take a look at the war in the Intifada, maybe 1,000 Israeli died, 5,000 Arab died. So I think the worst victims are, are there. But they are more willing to kill Jews than to leave. And this is the mm -hmm. main problem. Mm -hmm. Because f even for the, I would tell you, you know, some leftists, and that's true, that I had more problem with the, with the left than with the right wing people. But I had also allies on the right and on the left. But some leftists are telling me, but you know, we want peace, we want to forget this. Yeah. And I'm telling them very clearly, if you want to make peace with your neighbor, you'd better change their state of mind regarding what you're, what you're experiencing yeah. and what you're doing. Because if the Arabs believe that the Israeli soldiers are killing their children, the Arab children, just for the pleasure, there will never be peace. And I'm telling you something, if it's really like that, the Israeli army, nobody would like to have the state of Israel life for Absolutely. a now, thousand decades. Well, exactly. I, but I want to pursue this just a little bit more. You have won court cases because of forensic evidence. So any fair-minded person that sees the evidence, you even won in court. You've been completely vindicated. It, has there been an op-ed in a, in a Palestinian or Arab newspaper in support of you. But in the, wait, just wait, in the entire Arab world, there hasn't been one op-ed in support of uh, you. Do you count the French friends as a part of the Arab world? I'd actually like to ask you <laughs> that question, is it? No, but I'm telling you, I never had any op-ed in the French media to support in support of me. Uh -huh. So I don't even ask the Arab world. Uh -huh. I, mean, I was kidding, of course, when I was saying uh -huh. that. But I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, there. It's a brainwash. The brainwashing is the worst thing which happened. I mean, you know, brainwashing can take you in very, very bad. Uh, Absolutely. Situation. Now, the direction I'm heading in is, what would happen to a Palestinian in a Palestinian society that got out and publicly supported you? Dead. There would be. So, so it's almost like a. I mean, look, it would be virtual suicide. What you call Palestinian? The Arabs, when they are selling land or properties to the Jews, they are killed. Yeah, there is a death penalty in the so-called moderate Palestinian authority. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? When someone will come and reveal the truth about their life for so many years, you think that they will let, leave him alone? No, of course. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's very dangerous. You made a joke, but I think that there is some seriousness if I consider France to be part of the Arab world. Um, there's a lot of anti-Semitism in France. There's a lot of pro- Arab pro-Muslim sentiment. What is the state of France today? Look, again, this was a joke, of no. course. But <clears throat> I tell you something. But there is a favoritism towards the Arab okay, world. Okay, of course. But it's very important to understand in this situation that we are not dealing with powerful arms. The Arab population in France is not powerful. The power now is still in the Christian and mostly also with the Jewish journalists. 
but since Jew journalists, instead of just being journalists, being just normal, decent journalists, they are demonizing and bashing Israel much more in order to be accepted in the French society because it's really trendy to be anti-Israel. And anyone who goes and says something which is pro-Israel is built very strangely. I mean, this man has become a nutcase case and will not invite him anymore. Right. You know, we had, I can give you an example. Uh, there is a French philosopher whose name is Pierre-André Taguieff. He's a non-Jewish philosopher, one of the most prominent guys, very, very intelligent, very respected. Each of his books were, had book reviews in all the newspapers. He was on TV, was very, 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 very uh, publicized. Six months ago, he published a book where he put 100 pages supportive of me concerning the Mohammed al case. Mm -hmm. His book was silenced in 100% of the media. He didn't have a single book review. He was not invited in any radio, TV, or anything like that. One of his friends, another friend, wrote a book review for him in a magazine which was supposed to be published in Luxembourg. You know what happened? The so guy received uh, an email from the, uh, uh, the newspaper in Luxembourg telling him, we will never publish your article and you're fired. <laughs> the guy was working for them for 30 years. So when it comes to revealing the truth, it's the, you're breaking such a law of silence that it's too dangerous for them. And any, anyone who comes and supports this is paying a high price.